Hey Robert. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you doing? Well, I just don't know what's going on. No one tell me if I'm under arrest or what the deal is. Okay. Well, I'll be happy to kind of explain everything that's going on. Um, so you're kind of well aware. Um, you doing all right right now? You don't have no physical injuries? Oh, no, sir. Did anyone mistreat you? No, Make sir. you any promises, threats, or anything like that? No, sir. Okay. You know who I am? Are you LeClaire? Yeah. yeah. Detective LeClaire? Yes, sir. Uh, you remember who I am? Yeah. Okay. You have any idea what's going on today? Well, it obviously has to do with the, uh, the Freedleys, uh, Rebecca and her uh, mom and her stepdad. Okay. Do you have probation right now for anything? Yes, sir. What are you on probation for? It was a uh, petty theft. Okay. And that's all taken care of? Yes, I just finished uh, um, my community service for it. And, um, Man. What did you do, like weekends or something? Yeah, uh, no, I did it, um, I did it four, four or five days a week, four days a week. Just got it all the way a couple weeks. Okay. Um, I take it you're still living on Peacock, right? Who lives at all at that address? Me, my mom, and my little sister. Okay. And how old is she when you say little? Twelve. Okay. You have, uh, does your grandma still live across the street? Yes, sir. I mean, she physically lived there. Oh no, it's her. It's her. It belongs to her, but she she actually lives the majority of her time at a house she has in Los Angeles. Does anyone live in her house at across from you? Uh, no, no one currently lives there. It's really just a summer house that she has. Okay. Um, you're not under the influence of anything right now. You coherent and everything like that. Yes, sir. Okay. Um. Obviously, we're here because uh, I've been investigating um, this murder for some time. Um, some information came to light. I've taken some information to a judge. Uh, he reviewed the facts. Uh, he kind of agreed uh, with my assessment. Um, obviously, uh, we had the search warrant for your home. Um, I have a search warrant to collect your DNA. Um, is that all right with you? But that's fine. The blood sample or? Uh, no, it's something easier than that. It's just uh, like a saliva sample. You know, you just stick a Q-tip in your mouth and collect a, a saliva sample from your, like your cheek. Okay. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm sure you probably have some questions. Oh, uh, what do you, I mean, that, I mean, that's something I, you know, I'd volunteer. Obviously, okay. there's a little more reason for the, you know, search warrant, me being detained and everything. Okay. Well, and am I under arrest or, I mean... Well, you're not free to go right now because we got a obligation to meet our requirements of our search warrant and obtain certain things. Um, but let me, you know, if you have something to say that could change my mind or my direction, I'm really willing to hear what you have to say. Um, you know, however, because you're at the police station and you've been here for several hours, um, I am required to read you your rights. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me do that. <clears throat> you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? I understand that. Anything you say may be used against you in court. I understand that. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. Do you understand? I understand that. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge before any question if you want one. Okay. Yes, yeah. I understand. You understand all that? Yes, sir. Does it kind of make sense to you? 
Yes, yes. Okay. Um, obviously, you've gone through the court process before with this, the petty, theft this petty theft thing. Um, what do you think about all this? I, I mean, I, I just don't know what would lead you to believe that you know I, I'm responsible for it. I understand that. You know, I understand that. Uh, you know, speaking with me and everything. So, you know, just the fact that you know, I was so you know, I was close with her and things like that. I understand that. I just don't. I, I don't understand what, um, like, validates like the search warrant and things like that. I, I don't understand. Okay, well, I'd be happy to kind of explain some of those things. Um, maybe if I can get a little bit personal personal information from you first, then we can kind of get into that if you don't mind. Okay. Um, do you work in or anything? Um, I, I had a, I was working with my uncle for the summer, and then I stopped that when school started, and then um, that was right about when I started doing the um, um, community service. So I just made that. I just, you know, every day I didn't have school, I did community service. So now, uh, actually, I had a job interview with the county today, but I'm assuming I missed that. What type of job were you looking for? I did command community service at the Coachella Valley Animal Campus. It's like a you know county-owned animal shelter, and they I guess they had openings for temporary temporary workers, and I was going to interview for that. Okay. Um, well, it's been a while since we talked, um, and I don't know what's changed in your life. Um, I think last time we talked, you were working at the um, Not So City. City. You, you're not there no more. No. Um, have you had any uh, other jobs since the water park? Uh, Circuit City. Okay. How long did you work there for? Six months. Okay. And mm -hmm. where'd you go after that? Uh, after that, I went. Um, after that, it was about. I was about. You know, then there was just a short time where I was unemployed, then I went to uh, work with my uncle okay. for a few months, two, three months, something like that. What's his name? Uh, Greg Pape. Gregory Pape. Okay. Where does he live around here? He lives with, uh, he takes care of my grandma, so he's her son. She And he lives with her, taking care of her. And you, did you say that was in L.A. or something? Um, it's, it's in Alhambra, which is okay. 20 minutes out of L.A. What about, uh, you haven't got married since, have you? You got a girlfriend or anything like that? Yes. Who's your girlfriend now? Uh, her, her name's Sarah Honaker. Okay. Same person? Yes. How long have you guys been going out? A uh, year and a little over seven months, I think. What kind of relationship has that developed into? Um, I it, feel like it's pretty serious. And you know we've talked about we've talked about marriage and stuff like that, but you know right now we're just trying to get our our lives going. Where does she live at? Um, she lives in Cathedral City. Okay. Does she work or anything? Yes, she works at a uh, um, at the river. It's called Ulta. It's a uh, makeup. Uh, so yeah, they sell what they sell makeup. Okay. Um, what do you do when you're not working or hanging out at home? Like what's your hobbies and I really haven't been been up so much. I've really spent m most of my free time just hanging out at my house with my girlfriend. Uh, I'm a pretty big video gamer, so that's usually, I guess, that would be my hobby. Okay. Um, last time we talked, you were talking about a, a career in the military. Mm -hmm. um, I, I thought about that a lot, but um, just with with my relationship with my girlfriend and stuff just getting a little serious i i'm not quite sure i'm going to continue with that but uh but i have been uh, looking into um like law uh, as far as like uh, I, i've been you know completely figured out where you know there's correctional systems there's patrol officers things like that i am taking a uh, introduction to administration of justice at the college of the desert and i think i'm going to try out the uh, peace officer training course Who's your instructor at COD? Uh, Dr. Um, oh, crap. <laughs> that was just funny. I was just thinking about I always forget his name. Clayton Mays. That's what it is. Dr. Clayton Mays. 
Do you have any other classes there at the school other than that one? Yes, I have a uh, psychology of uh, family and marriage, and I also have two economics classes. Well, that should help with your relationship with your girlfriend, the psychology yeah. class. That was, that, was, that was kind of the reason she's taking that with me. That was kind of the reason. Oh, I well, that's not a good thing then. Uh, you both are learning the same. Yeah. Um, other than your shoplifting, any other arrest or anything like that? No, sir. You have a probation officer? Uh, not that I know of. You know, they just said I'm on probation. Okay. Have you you've met all your conditions of probation and things like that? What do you mean? Um, were you supposed to do anything else? Other no, no. There was just community service, and then I just have to stay away from Circuit City for two years. Okay. You were supposed to get fingerprinted too, right? I did. Oh, 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 no, for the, uh, with the, with the petty theft, they, um, the attorney or whatever, lawyer or whatever that was appointed, was, spoke with them, and I guess, you know, they were saying that, yeah, I guess that was just one of the things they decided I didn't have to do. Okay. I don't know. She said she talked to him, and she's like, oh, you gotta go pay $10 and go stay in line over at the Indio and stuff like that, but she's like, well, you know. I got to talk to him. They said you don't have to do it anymore. Who told you that? My, the, the attorney that was appointed to me. So you had a public defender and oh, you yeah, said public that? defender. That's. Um. Hmm. All right. Well. More specifically, kind of tell me, in your own words, why we're talking today. I, that, that's that's what I, what I don't know. I haven't been. No one's really said really anything. Just that they mentioned your name, and then so I, I you know assumed it was from uh, that case. Brought it up with that officer. He's like, yeah, that's what it pertains to. And um, that was about it. No one said if I'm under arrest or if I'm not or. or I'm, well, we're talking about Becky Freely. Okay. Okay. And her murder. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's some of the things we're discussing. How do you feel today about talking to me about that? Like in, in what way? It's, I mean, do, like, do, I, do I, like about that case in general or actually talking to you? I mean. No, how do you feel about, you know, does it make you sad, make you happy? I mean, she was a friend of yours. Well, yeah, yeah, we, we dated for over a year, about a year and two or three months and stuff. And yeah, we were, we were really close. And um, yeah, when it when it first happened, it, it was you know I mean it was you know hit kind of close, but it uh, you know it's just you know over time just like I had a uncle die about a, uh, a year ago or something, and then you know that was bad too, but just a little bit of time. But the, the, I guess the worst part now is just not knowing you know what happened. Okay. If you had anything to do with what happened to her, you need to tell me right now. Okay. Well, I didn't. Okay. Do you know for sure who did? No. No. Do you have any idea who did? I have not the slightest idea. The only thing that, you know, I had spoken with her, her family, they they talked about how her um, her mom and her stepdad were in some kind of serious debt and they they brought up the idea of something about like a loan shark or something but I mean I'm not you know I'm not saying that's like something I seriously believe or anything I don't know who told you that it was one of Rebecca's sisters Tiffany do you know Tiffany more you know she's Tiffany a friend of yours or do you know her more I haven't spoken with her since I broke up with Rebecca I mean, what was your relationship with Tiffany? Um, well, she was, I mean, wasn't really. It's just I only, the only time I ever spoke with her was when I um, would visit Rebecca when she lived up in uh, Santa Clarita. Okay. Um, is there anyone you can eliminate from this investigation? Well, Christian, I suppose. He was the only one who was, he was with me the, during that time. Okay. I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't know anyone who would or who wouldn't. I, you know, there wasn't. I, I haven't found anyone to have any any motive to. I wouldn't understand why. 
Well, tell me why you didn't do it. Why I didn't? Well, there's, I mean, aside from the fact that I, you know, there was, there's no gain for me. You know, I was already, I was already broken up with her. It wouldn't benefit me at all. But other, I mean, other than that, you know, I wouldn't kill anyone anyway. I mean. <laughs> Do you think you're capable of doing something like that? Killing someone? No, no, no. I, I mean, especially the things I heard. You know, found her in a, you know, wheelbarrow or stuff like that, and that was that just, you know, seems really, you know, gruesome and stuff. I, I wouldn't be able to do that. Do you actually think it happened the way people say it happened? I don't know how anything happened. All I know is that there were. That, uh, she was in the wheelbarrow and two other people were in the house. Or actually, I don't even know if the wheelbarrow was outside, I just assumed. But. Did you ever tell anyone, even jokingly, that you were involved? No. Are you willing to take a polygraph to verify your truthfulness? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I just don't. I just like to know, like, why, why it is so, like, why well, I am such a suspect. I, I'd say, you know. I mean, if we're we're getting into like all that, I suppose that you know, I'd want some sort of like legal advice, you know, some sort of advisor, or something. Okay. What if someone had told me that they saw you driving on Highway seventy four that day? I say they were mistaken. Okay. Do you remember that day? I. The only reason I remember as much as I do is just because I I had said it so many times, you know, before, and it, you know, I, I mean I I know what I was you know the things I did I don't remember times at all really. Okay. So with that in mind, you think you could kind of. Give me a, a recollection of that particular day, you know, from the day, from the time you woke up. Um, actually, maybe from, you know, your work, because I know you worked that day. Yeah, I, I, yeah that, I guess that'll be my starting point. I just remember that I, I worked that day, and I, I suppose I drove home, I think so. I think I had my car at that time. And um, before that, I had just gotten rides with Christian. But um, I suppose I drove home, and um, I was supposed to hang out with supposed to hang out with Christian that day, but I hadn't gone to church because I'd worked. I'd worked uh, the morning mass. The church we go to is ten thirty, and we missed that. And they don't have an evening mass, so I was going to try to go out to a mass at uh, Sacred Heart. And we, as we were driving out that direction, I gave them a call and found out we'd missed it. So we went back over to Christian's and. They were playing games at some point and then went paintballing. Well, what church were you, which church did you miss from the morning service? St. Louis. St. Louis. That's in, um, it, it's in, in um, it's by the Mary Pickford Theater. Okay. It's just south of that. So do you attend church regularly? Um, I, I try to. I, I, I try to. <laughs> Which is your regular church? St. Louis. Okay. So why Sacred Heart? Sacred Heart is the, the church that my family and I go to if we don't attend the morning mass. Because they don't, St. Louis doesn't have an evening mass. Is St. Louis, I would assume it's, is it a Catholic church also? Yes, sir. So you get home from work. And you decide to go to church? Yes, sir. Did you go somewhere specifically when you left your house? No, I, I don't know. When well, we were going to go to the church. Okay, but before going to Christian's house, did you guys go anywhere between your house and Christian's house? We, oh, wait, wait, did we? Oh, no, I, I don't believe we stopped anywhere. Okay. Uh, you said you decided to go to Sacred Heart. How did you find out there was no 
service or the service I, was I called. I, I, had, um, I got the number in a phone book before we left, or, or no, no, I called 411 on the way. And uh, I called them and, and they were driving out there, called and I was asking what time the mass was. And I, I still don't remember when the mass was and what time it was, but we missed it. And uh, so I'm like, all right, we'll just go back to your house. You called on your way there. Where's there? Sacred Heart. Uh, no, you said you called while you're on the way there. On my way there. What's there? The church, Christian's house, another place? Oh, yeah, on my way to the church. We just called the church, you okay. know, directory or whatever. Where's the Sacred Heart Church located? <sighs> Sacred Heart is on. Um, it's like Cook and something. Um, uh, what's the name of that street that's next to, that runs alongside um, College of the Desert? Um, I'm really bad with street names. Is it Fred Waring? Uh, Fred Waring? Oh, there, okay, there's Monterey, and then there's uh, Magnesia Falls that's north of uh, COD, the one that's south of that. It's off of that street. Fred Waring would be it, south it is, of COD? Yeah, Fred Waring, okay. Yeah, it's off of Fred Waring. Okay. Um, do you know anybody there? At the church? Yeah. No. Did no. you talk to anyone you know? or? No, because we, you know, like I said, we, we only we only go there if we miss the morning mass. So, I mean, Did I think, you actually talk to a person when you called? or? Yeah. Someone picked up and I just asked them what time mass was, that their evening mass there. Do you remember where you were at when you made that phone call? I don't remember. Could you approximate it? I, I really don't. I don't remember at all. Christian was driving, and I was playing with my phone, calling four one one and stuff. I, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, the free four one one number, and you have to. Uh, it's one of the you know the, it's like a it's not a real operator, and you have to like say the name, and then it'll. But sometimes it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Well, you left your house in Rancho Mirage, correct? Yes, sir. And Christian lives in Cathedral City, right? Yes, sir. And Sacred Heart is in Palm Desert. Yes, sir. So when you left your house, maybe you can approximately give me an idea when you would have made the phone call, you know, within a minute of leaving, within 20 minutes of leaving? Well, I, like I said, I called 411, and I, I really don't remember how long I was how long it took me to get the number. Okay. Um, I mean, did you guys drive to Palm Desert? Uh, we were, I'm not sure where exactly the city limits is, but I, I believe we entered Palm Desert. Okay. Um, do you remember which way you would have traveled? I, I really don't remember. I, I wasn't paying attention to the streets at all. If you were to drive there today from your house, what would you think would be the normal route you would take? I drove there. I don't know. I've tried taking. Uh, I've tried taking Frank Sinatra all the way out. I've taken 111 to um, try taking 111 out there, and I've also taken Frank or Frank Sinatra to Monterey, gone down that way because that's the way I go to school. So it'd be. I don't think I would have gone Frank Sinatra all the way down to. Uh, was that Cook or whatever? I don't think I would have gone that way. But anything we've gone down Monterey, we've gone. Taking 111. Oh, and, and Christian was driving. I suppose we probably took 111 since Christian was driving. I don't think he knows that area as well. Okay. What car was Christian driving? He was driving his um, dad's car. Uh, it's an Acura something. <laughs> I don't know what the model was. Okay. What kind of car did you drive? I have an Acura Legend. So if you're driving, if you guys are in a car driving to Sacred Heart, and we're trying to get an idea where you're going, where you're at, I mean, are you able to recall some a business, an intersection, I, somewhere specifically that maybe you guys turned around in, stopped at? I, I honestly don't, don't remember Did that. Did you get gas, drive. go to the ATM? I, I don't believe we stopped anywhere. I think we were just driving and then we ended up turning around and just going to his house. Okay, so tell me uh, specifically what happened when you got to his house? Oh, crap, uh, we, uh, I, I really don't remember that day very much at all anymore. 
Um, I probably should have written it down or something, but I think we just got to his house and we were, uh, we, we wanted to go paintball on him, and, but because uh, the gun that I had was, I'd gotten it from my friend and it didn't work all that well, and I was going to try to see if I could get it to shoot right. And uh, so we were hanging out at his house and we ended up going out there and we're out there for a while and came back. And What do you mean by going out there? Oh, we went out to, um, um, behind um, James Orkin Middle School. There's like that big desert area, but there's a there's a spot where there's a lot of like tables and chairs and a bunch of stuff that people brought out there for specifically for paintballing. So that's where we're going out to play with the guns. But, you know, just trying, basically trying to fix my gun the whole time. I think Christian's worked pretty well. Um, were you able to use your gun at all? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I fired a few, I believe. But I mean, it, it kept leaking air. So it didn't last very long. How long were you guys at the school for? Uh, we were out there for, I, I don't remember the, the time, but I know we were paintballing for a while and then uh, Christian ended up uh, losing his keys. And, and then that took a little while too. Where did he lose the keys at? He, he just, he dropped them somewhere. I don't remember exactly where. Okay. So what happened after that? Uh, we just went home. Or oh, wait, did we? I don't even. I'm not even sure if I went back to his house or not, or if he just took me straight home. Maybe, maybe. But then, uh, on before we went to my house, we stopped at a, a, a gas station. And I, I remember that because I was getting uh, my. Um, so I was getting a chapstick for my cousin, and then one, then after that, he took me home, and I was hanging out with my cousin ever since. Oh, what then, was your cousin's name? Martin Johnson. Martin? Yes. Johnson? Johnson. Yes. Where does he live now? Well, he's going to school up at uh, UC Davis. So, but um, he's staying, well, staying on campus somewhere. At UC Davis? Yeah. Up, up near San, Sacramento. Oh. How old is he? Oh, crap. Uh, probably 23, something like that. Do you have any brothers? I have. Um, I have one older brother, I have an older sister, and my younger sister. Um, there's a couple of photographs in your house on the wall. Uh, picture you by your little sister. Um, there's another guy in the photograph. Kind of looks younger than you. Who would that be? Another guy in a photograph? It could be any one of my cousins. I've got right, all... right when you go in the door. I'm, I don't, you know, memorize my pictures, okay. but I've got my... My grandma had seven children, so we okay. our family branched out. We could have been any of my cousins. He's he in several of the pictures, and you guys. Um, what does he wear? Skate clothes a lot. Because um, it may end up being my older brother who actually looks younger than me. He's only five foot seven. There was one picture on the wall with. I don't know if it was your sister or a couple of girls, and they look like they're like doing some Charlie's Angels. Uh, okay. You know, with okay, their fingers I remember or something. That picture. That. And there was, there was some like foliage in the background. Yeah. It was like in my, my grandma's backyard. I saw you're in the picture, right? Yeah, I should Who be. was the other guy? It should be my brother, my older brother. He's 20, oh crap, no, he's 30 now. He's Does 30. he look younger than you? Yeah, he's only five foot seven and he dresses like he's 12. Okay. And who are the girls in there? Yeah, it would probably be my older sister and my younger sister. Okay, how old is your older sister? 24 or 5. Okay. She's had a birthday. I think she's 25. So going back to after you guys were paintballing, were you guys with anyone else paintballing? No. No, it was just, it was just us because we were just messing around with the guns. Okay. Did uh, you guys talk to anyone? Anyone come by that you know and, hey, what's going on? Well, no, because it was like, it's like, it's like kind of like back like behind the school almost so I mean you, you're not gonna like see someone driving through the well I mean no other thing. paintballers there mm -mm. you talk to anyone on the phone while you're out there I don't I I don't believe so if anything maybe my girlfriend or something but I, I don't know I mean would you typically have your phone with you sometimes but I mean I was we were planning on doing some like you know little, little skirmishes just us too so I, if anything I'd probably put my phone in the car or something because I wouldn't want to get it all dirty because, you know, it's all desert. Okay. 
Okay. Would you leave your phone on or off? It's very possible I turn it off. Why would you do that? Why would I turn it off? Just because yeah. it saved battery. My phone, um, a lot of times I, I'll use it to, uh, it plays MP3, so a lot of times I'll use it to play that, so it runs it on the battery fairly quickly. Do you remember what time you guys finished up? I don't, I don't remember times much at all. The, the only time like I, I vaguely remember was, I believe my cousin said I got home like like 9 o'clock or something, 9.30, something like that. Why didn't your cousin go with you guys? He was, he had, oh, he had a, I believe he was working on his car at the time. His car, he still has a, he was, since no one's actually living at my grandma's house, he's, um, he brought his car down to work on it, and I believe his, you know, that was his goal, just get that finished. He still has, actually hasn't done it yet, it's still in the uh, garage. Is there anything illegal at your house? Um, there shouldn't be anything illegal. The um, I've got a, a rifle registered to myself, and the uh, the only other thing was um, uh, there's a uh, shotgun that was it was my uncle's who had deceased, and even I asked uh, uh, Clayton Mays, my instructor, uh, he should recall me asking that, that uh, you know how I would get to register that and he had given me a name but I hadn't followed up on it yet okay so I'd, I'd say that would be the closest thing to be legal so a rifle is registered to you yes sir is that a violation of your probation do you have any firearm well, restrictions well they I, I had owned it before they I they, uh, got the probation so I mean I, I just assumed that they tell me if I couldn't have a firearm okay um, what kind of rifle it's a it's a like a World War II era uh, Russian Mosin Nagin. It's a 7.62 by 54, uh, you know, big, fairly large round. Does it still work? Yes, sir. Okay, and you said this other one was a shotgun? Yes, sir. What kind of shotgun? It's a Winchester 1300 Defender. Okay, what gauge is that? 12 gauge. Um, where, would, where would they be found at? The uh, rifle and the shotgun? Uh, I, I keep those uh, under my bed. Okay. And the shotgun, who would that be registered to? Um, like I said, uh, Dr. Mays, I'm not even sure if my, my uncle had it registered because he, he kind of just lived out by himself. And But um, I, was, I was actually hoping to have it registered to myself soon, yeah. so I don't know. So it may or may not be registered to your uncle? Yes, sir. But I mean, either way, he's deceased, so I don't know if they keep it registered or not. I don't know how that works. Okay. And his name is what, your uncle? Uh, Theodore uh, Pape. Okay. Um, what city did he live in before he passed? He lived out in, um, it was near Pear Blossom. It was called, uh, I, I don't recall. I can't remember the name of that, uh, the city that he lived in, but he lived on someone else's property in a trailer that he had. What were at? Well, what, what state? Oh, Cal California. It's a pear blossom. I don't know where that is. Oh, okay. Well, it's, I'm not really sure exactly where it is either. Southern but they, California, Northern California? Uh, it, Southern California. I, I believe it's north of here, but I think it's still Southern California. It's only, yeah, it's got to be. It's only, it's only a few hours away. Okay, so what about counties? What county? You know, my, if you wanted to ask my mom, she could tell you. I really don't remember all that well. Um, anything else? Not that I can think of. Okay. Um, you have access to any other weapons? No, no other firearms. Okay. I, you know, I've, yeah, no, no one in my family really, really has many guns, okay. except for some uh, an uncle of mine who lives up in Oregon. So, wouldn't say I had any access to that. Okay. Um, you still friends with Christian? Um, well, there was. We were we were really good friends. We kind of um, kind of drifted apart a little bit when he he didn't he never really got along with my girlfriend, so that kind of we haven't spoken for a little while. Okay, well tell me about that. Well, he um, I, I I I'm not completely sure why, you know, but uh, he just never really got along with my girlfriend, and there was um, 
you know, just a lot of tension between him and her, so I always had to, like, divide up my time between the both of them, and then, um, you know, so, but then he had just kind of been, just kind of a jerk for a while, and I was just asking him to uh, apologize to her, and, um, and he didn't, he didn't want to, and then finally he ended up cussing her out, so I'm like, dude, look, just, I, I don't want to talk to you. But, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't any kind of hostile thing. It's just like, you know, you two obviously aren't working together. <laughs> so it's fair to say you guys aren't friends right now? Yeah, yeah I'd say so. Yeah. Um, but you're surely not enemies. Yeah, no, there's no, yeah. Okay. Well, tell me about the guns that uh, Christian had. Guns that Christian had? Um, let's see, there was... The only firearm that, uh, I don't, but I'm not really sure that he would have had access to anything. His, his, um, see, there was a, a was it a Winchester, like 1300 or something? But it's, it's a newer, newer one. So it's a Winchester Defender or something. Um, that's the only, it's the only firearm I'm really aware of. What about um, your girlfriend, Sarah? Mm. She have any guns? Um, I, I think her grandpa owns something, but I've, I've never even seen him. Okay. Um, what about her dad or brothers or anything Oh, like that? she, she lives with her grandparents, I should have stated that. Okay. What about, um, who's Christian's girlfriend? Jacqueline, yeah. uh, something. So what about Jackie? Does she have any I doubt firearms? It. Well, because I helped them move, too, and she, I didn't move any firearms. She just doesn't strike me as the person to have any guns. So how long have you and Christian been kind of separated? Um, I'm not sure. It's been, I've just kind of been losing track since things. So I've just been doing lots of stuff with, uh, well, there's just a lot of stuff been going on, like with my, uh, Like with the petty theft and everything like that, I, but it, it was a few months. Well, that was in July, right? The petty theft. Uh, some yeah, probably July. So it's only been two months. Maybe. Wait, the petty theft was not in June. Maybe May or something like that. It was May or June. Okay. Um, so what does Christian do with his time? I really don't even know. Last last thing I had heard, he had uh, he was working at Soak City. I don't know if he still does. Well, even you know, say four months ago, you know, March, same, April, when you guys were hanging out. Same thing as me, just playing games and working. But uh, he he didn't want to do school, so gave him a little extra time. But so what's he doing with his life? I don't know. Last thing I heard, he wanted to. Do, he wanted to keep doing the military. Okay. And that's what you guys told me back then about that. What, what's, what's he waiting for? I don't know. He said that he wanted to go by uh, the beginning of this year, or uh, something like that. Okay. I think it was the middle of this year. Or and something. now we're at the end of the year. Uh -huh. I mean, you, I'm just asking you because you're his friend. Yeah. You were I, his friend. You you know more. Uh, about him than a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Do you know why he hasn't got into the military? And it's I really don't know. Um, I really don't know. He seemed like he that was really really what he wanted to do, and he seemed more likely to go through it than than, than me. I really wanted to, but you know, with my things were you know kind of going along with my girlfriend and stuff, so. Um, other than those, the um, shotgun and the other, the 7.62 you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, any of the other friends have any weapons? I actually, I, I honestly, Christian was, Christian was really my only like real friend that I really hung out with. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't really, not no really other friends to speak of. It's really just me and my girlfriend and school. And, like I mean, have you have you associated with people? Or, I, I'll, you know, I'll talk. Parties who have weapons out or anything like that? 
No, sir. I haven't even been to a party and I have no idea how to pump. Are you fascinated with guns? Am I fascinated? I, you know, I, you know, they're cool. Yeah, that's why I got one. You know, that, you know, I, I like to have one, but it's, you know, not like insane about it or anything. Okay. Um, have you ever, I mean, you shot your guns, I would assume, right? Where do you typically go shoot at? Um, well, I, I really don't typically go shooting, uh, but I've gone up to the uh, uh, Thousand Palms. There's like a shooting area that everyone goes to. I don't know if you've seen I mean, I know people go around and shoot in the desert, and I'm, you know, I'm just curious whether it's right or wrong, whatever. I mean, people own guns to shoot guns, you know, so. The best way to be safety conscious of a gun is to know how to use it and maybe shoot it from time to time. Mm -hmm. I was just curious on, you know, if you did things like that. I've I, I've gone, but I honestly haven't even gone very often because it's been you know it's been hot. It's finally starting to cool off. I'd like to take it out sometime soon, but it's still a little warm. What about your girlfriend? How does she feel about? shooting and guns and all that well she likes them but uh especially like with the uh the rifle i have since it's you know it's like all wooden stock with a, a metal little uh, uh butt plate it you know it's powerful she can only shoot it like once or twice and then she's got a dead arm for the rest of the day so but uh she, she likes it well, most guns or most girls don't like guns and yeah like, you know, hey. yeah but uh, that's why she really works with me. She's, you know, she likes the video games, and not a lot of the girls do. And uh, she's just. You ever shoot like a pistol? Have I ever? I shot. Uh, let's see. I've shot one. Not in a long time. Uh, I don't even know who whose it was. It was this old. It was a twenty-two revolver. I'm not even sure who who owned it, but. No, not, not a long time, but uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have to somehow acquire one for the uh, uh, peace officer class because you're required to carry a firearm or have a firearm to go shooting with. So I'm gonna try to talk my brother into getting one. What about uh, you? Never shot a semi-automatic pistol? No. Yeah. You know what that is, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know anyone who has one? No, I, I don't know anyone who currently owns one. I'm sure maybe my, um, uh, uh, there's a couple uncles of mine, one of them lives in San Francisco, one of them lives in uh, Oregon, and they both hunt, as far as I know, you know, somewhat often I'd imagine they'd have one. Do you ever see a, a pistol, you know, a semi-automatic pistol in uh, person? A uh, person, just, you know, like, just like museums and stuff. I. Yeah, you know, just not not really, never really like played with one or anything, you know. Okay. Just airsoft guns and just replicas and stuff like that. Now you dated Becky for how long? About a year and two or three months. Okay. How often would you go up to her house up in Pinion? <clears throat> how often? Uh, I would say, kind of often or. I mean, because, I mean, she was, she spent a lot of her time down in the desert rather than being up there since she worked down there and uh, she would often stay with her friends. So, I mean, I'd say she, you know, I, hung, I spent, you know, I hung out with her down in the desert more often than I went up to her house, but, I, but I've been up there a few times. Gotten lost just about every time. At one time it was our, uh, I believe it was our year anniversary, went up there at night and Got uh, got my car stuck in that. It was actually my mom's car. Got my mom's car stuck in the sand because I went the wrong way. I was trying to turn around, but I can't get up there to save my life. You you so you when you say that, what do you mean? What's that? Uh, you can't get up there to save your life. Oh, well, just as the you know expression implies, you know, even if like your life counted on it, you'd still end up screwing it up because you're not good at something. Are you mean because of the, the roads or because you don't know the directions? Well, it's, what, what do you, well, because it's, you drive up a street and then it turns into dirt roads and a lot of that just kind of, I'd always end up getting lost. Okay, so if you were to drive up there in the daytime, do you think you could find your house? Oh no, <laughs> and especially not now. 
that, that, no way. I'm surprised. Yeah. I well, mean, there's only well, every two turns and you're there. Two turns? There was, say, about, what was it, about four? Because I remember I, I wrote it down, my, I had a piece of paper in my wallet, and I was, uh, uh, let me know, it's like, oh, turn after, you know, the, uh, you know, the sign or the, one of the turns was uh, turning after, like, a little section of fence where they had uh, llamas, I remember that. I was referring to the two turns after the main road, you know. Two turns? Yeah, it's, so you take a right and... You, oh, know, where, you know where Palm Canyon is, right? The dirt road that goes off of Highway 74? I, I don't know any of the street 74 names is the mountain I road. Noticed, yeah, I know that's the, that's the main road. So there's a sign that says, you know, Palm Canyon. I, it's I the didn't, one you get into the neighborhood, basically. I didn't... I never used the street signs. I always just went off of uh, like different sites. You remember a big street with about thirty mailboxes, right next to the main street. The well, yeah, okay, that yeah, that would make sense because okay. they all the mailboxes are. Everyone has a mailboxes right there at the main place. You ever drive by there? Did I ever drive by there? Yeah. Well, wait. Don't you have to get to go by there to get to around? Uh -huh. Well, well, then of course I would have. Uh -huh. I don't know. I mean, you, you can drive down a lot of dirt roads to get places. I'm just saying that's the main road. I don't know what your normal oh, mode of. Oh, okay. Well, I'd imagine that was the. That's the one. If that's the way. So you if you there. pass the mailboxes, then what way would you get to Becky's house? I don't know. Like, well, I'm, I'm just assuming that the mailboxes is, is that that's the street. Yeah, the it is. That's okay. what I'm saying. If I drove there, I would drive down okay. Highway 74 and turn down the mailboxes. Okay. So imagine. I do the same thing as you. I know. Okay. I know it's the street that the street that you turn off of seventy four is the same street to get to that uh, that like park or reserve or whatever it is right there. It's a little, little camping area. I know that's the street that you turn off of seventy four. Okay. How many times do you think you were at Becky's house during your um, time? How many times up there? I've, I don't know. I was up there a few times. I mean, more than ten, less than ten. Probably a little more than ten, but probably no. It's probably about ten. Actually, that's probably about a good guesstimate. Okay. I mean, it's like a ends up being about a little over a forty minute drive from my house. So. What'd you guys normally do up there? <clears throat> Watch movies. Hang out with her. Um, her mom and her stepdad would hang around. They cooked a lot. Experimented with a deep fryer. What type of people were? Um, Vicky's mom. Um. Rebecca's mom. Becky's mom. Yeah, so, so yeah, Vicky and John, right? Right. <clears throat> um, they they seemed nice. They just, um, they were I don't know. They just seemed a little different than me. Maybe you know, not like like hostile to me or anything. They just seemed you know, just kind of different personality. But they were you know, we we'd sit down and watch movies that would come on and stuff like that. But did you guys ever do anything outside the house? No. Oh, uh, me and the parents definitely not. Okay, what about you and Becky? We'd uh, run around and uh, play with, there's uh, like plants that you kind of like pull the tops off and you kind of make a little sword out of it. We, we'd done that before, but that's, that's really it. I mean, there's a lot of property up there. Yeah. I mean, you guys ever go shooting up there or anything? No, I wanted to because um, she, uh, she had told me that her, uh, her stepdad owned guns and he had spoken with me about uh, taking me shooting, and I wanted to. That was that was before I had my rifle and hadn't gotten shooting since I was like a little little kid. So I was, yeah, I wanted to try it. What type of guns did he have? You know, he he showed me them once, and I don't. There, he had a uh, some sort of revolver, um, and then there was a few rifles. I know he said one of them was a pellet gun, one of them was a twenty-two, and then there was a couple other big ones, but I I don't know what. Uh, models they were or anything because I, I only saw them one time um what else did you make you do up there you know did she have dirt bikes or anything no no it's it mainly it's mainly inside okay. but we really just watched a lot of movies she had a pretty big movie collection we could go through that a lot well what's this deal with all this hiking business she had um she had invited me to go hiking and I had told her I would, and I, I didn't 
you know, I wasn't planning on going because I knew she would have kept on bugging me, so I just said I would, and then I was planning on just, you know, canceling, you know, last minute, and then, you know, then she didn't go and hiking with whatever guy she was going hiking with or whatever, but, and, um, yeah, that was, that was it. And when was this? When was it? What, wait, when was? You were telling me about a hiking event. I'm um, asking you when that was. Well, that was that was the thing. That was that was when she had. That was uh, the night she. We were supposed to go hiking, and she. It was supposed to be me and her and some other guy who I don't know, and um, and that was that was the night that that happened. Is that what happened? She was. Yeah, that they were all good. What, what, tell me about this other guy. I don't know. I, I, I honestly can't remember whether she said he was a Marine or if I just assumed he was because that's, uh, that's who she um, associated with a lot. I'd heard about her and one of her sisters got going and hanging out at the, uh, the Marine base, the 29 Palms Marine base kind of a lot, hanging out with the Marines there. So, I, 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 like I said, I'm not sure if he actually was or not. Did Becky ever tell you of a specific person she was dating, or? No, she didn't. the The only clue that I could have as to who it was was that um, um, Javier. I don't know if you've spoken with him. I'd imagine you would have. He was like her. He was like Rebecca's like best friend. He uh, he said that, um, like an actual son of um, John. Uh, like one of like a son from a previous marriage or something like that was actually supposed to go up there, so that like and I guess he was supposed to be there like that day or something. So that's who I imagined was she was going hiking with. So it would almost be her relative if John was related to her. It would be her. Uh, it would be stepbrother or something. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, is that what your opinion is, or is that what Javier is telling you? Javier said that he was supposed to be there. Okay, and this is Javier is telling you this. Javier told me that because he had he called me the morning after that night because he I guess he had spoken with her, and so as far as she knew, she told him that I was supposed to be with her. So he calls me. He's like, oh, you know, what happened? You know, he tells me what happened. He's like, well, wait, were you with her? And I said, no, he wasn't. And, or no, I wasn't. And then he said that there was actually, there was uh, supposed to be um, the other guy there too. But he, but that was when he said there's only three bodies that they had found and he wasn't sure if maybe one of those was the stepbrother or what. How do you know Javi? Javier, I had gone to school with him. Um, so I went to middle school with him too, I think. And uh, his his mom is uh, Bonnie Garcia, the uh, assembly woman, or I'm not sure what the her actual you know title is or whatever. But uh, well, certainly you don't know him because of his mom's being an assembly person. Yeah, no, but I know him because I went to school with him. Okay, are you guys friends? I haven't spoken with him in uh, a little bit, but I mean, if I, I've seen him around school and I've said hi. Yeah. Is this school as in high school or college? College now. Presently? Okay. When's the last time you seen him? Uh, I don't think I've seen him since uh, last, what was it, semester ago or something. Okay. Well, this is, last semester would be prior to June? Or is it Yeah, that's why I, I'd, say I, I'd say I wouldn't, I haven't spoken with him in excess of five months, something like that. Okay. Do you guys have each other's phone numbers? Um, I don't know. I might might still have his number. Okay. I was just curious. You say he called you. Yeah, he did. How would why would he have your phone number? Well, like I said, I I had his phone number at one point, okay. but I'm not sure if I still do. So he had my number too. So you guys are good enough friends that you. Yeah, we had each other's phone, numbers. Each other's phone numbers. The other thing also was that I had done a school project with him, um, and so you know we had to have it exchanged us numbers because I went over to his house and we worked on a school project. Do you guys hang out with each other? That was the only time that I've actually like spent time with him out of school. 
When you did the project? Yes, sir. Did you two and Becky hang out? Um, no, I, I think we've, I think when I was hanging out with uh, Becky one point, here a couple times, we've seen him around and say hi to him, but we've never like all hung out. So let's forget about what Javier said. Okay. Okay, but going back to the night Becky was killed. Okay. You're telling me something about this hiking trip. Why did you think someone else was going to be there? She had said that um, well, she was trying to get me to go hiking, and I didn't particularly want to go. We had uh, we had broken up since, and she was you know I was kind of in the process of. You know, like I, I'd speak with her once in a while, but I was trying to make it, you know, fewer and fewer calls. And uh, she wanted to uh, uh, go hiking, and then she included there that there was some other guy who was supposed to be there, and I had no idea who it was. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah I can go, I can go. And Did I, she say who? She didn't say who. But like I said, I, I I couldn't remember if she had said that he was a marine or that that was just in my head. Who did? It? Who did she invite to go up there? Me. Okay. Anyone else? The well, some other guy. That that's what I don't know. Okay. Well, where does Christian fit in with this? Christian doesn't fit in with the hiking trip. Well, was remember when Becky came over to yeah. Christian's house? Yeah, I was at I was at Christian's house. Right. So I guess that'd be the only time he fits in anyway. Okay. So when Becky. This was the day before the murder. When she came over? Right. Was it? I, I, I believe it was, but I wasn't sure. Becky called you and said she was in the area and you were at Christian's house? Yeah, and she, she said over? that she was doing some homework or something with a friend of hers or something. She said she just wanted to stop by and say hi or something. And I'm like, well, I'm over at Christian's. And okay. So when she got to Christian's house and talked to you, was Christian present? Um, I think Christian walked out, and I, I think he just said hi, and I think he walked out one more time to say bye or something, but I'm not sure if he was, if he was there, I don't think he was standing there the whole time. I can't remember. Was he involved in the hiking conversation? No. No, no there was... Were you going to go out to Becky's house with Christian? No, I wasn't. Were you going to go up to Becky's at all? Well, I wasn't going to. It was never your intent to it go It was never to. my intent to actually go hiking. Okay. Did you leave Becky, did you lead Becky to believe that you and Christian were going to go up there together? No. I, no, I don't believe so. I believe I just said I was just going to go. Yeah. So why would other people believe that you and Christian were the ones going up there? I'm not sure. I mean, it, I, I guess suppose it's possible that uh, that maybe he was included since he was there. But I, I, as far as my recollection, I thought it was just me. Does Christian know who Becky is? Well, I I had dated her for you know that period of time, a year and three months, and he was he's been my friend since like sixth grade. So okay, so he knew Becky. Yeah. Was he friends with Becky? Uh, he never. He never, you know, hung out with her or talked to her unless it was through me in some way. Okay. But we, with the three of us, have hung out before. Okay. So, did you ever call Becky and tell her you weren't coming out there? Um, I I ended up speaking with her, and I had I said before when when I'd spoken with you how it happened. I I don't remember. I can't remember if she called me first or if I called her first because that was all uh, that was all somewhere around the time I was called at church um, but I, I don't remember how that how that went but I, I had said it before so I just I never thought of writing it down okay so did you tell her that you weren't not coming up there I told I, yeah I, I at some point did tell her that I wasn't coming You positive about that? I, I did tell her eventually that I was not going to go hiking with her. Okay. And when you told her that, was that in person or on the phone? It was on the phone. Okay. Whose phone? Uh, my phone. It was either my phone or. Well, because well, I, I, I believe, since I used the 411 number, 
I, it's possible that I used Christian's, like I got the number on my phone and then called on Christian's phone. So I'm really not sure which phone it was. You got what number? The number for the church. Okay, but what does that have to do with? So I'm not sure which phone I had ended up talking to her with because I remember her, I think she ended up calling back because she wasn't happy that I had canceled. And I think she ended up calling back on Christian's. So I, I, I think the first time I spoke with her was on my phone. And then she called back again on Christian's phone. I, I believe. I'm not going to. So when you had this conversation with Becky, where were you at? I was driving to <laughs> driving over to the church. Okay, so, so obviously I, I you were on a cell phone, right? Yes. You didn't use your home phone? I uh, know. No. Christian have a home phone at his dad's place? Uh, yeah. Are you guessing or what? Well, yeah, yeah, he's got a home phone at his dad's house, yeah. Because his dad told me they didn't have a home phone. Okay, well, I, I thought they did. Well, that's what I asked you, if you're guessing or... You oh, know well, I, I just I just assumed they did. I mean, but it, I don't think anyone used the home phone anyway. Okay, well, I'm, you're not sure about things, so I'm trying to clarify things. Okay. Okay. You had this conversation with Becky. Mm. Okay, that seems kind of important. And I'm just trying to find out if you called and canceled, or if that was your intent, you never got around to it. I, I know that I did end up canceling, but I don't remember if she called me or I called her, and I don't remember using Christian's phone at all. I, yeah, especially his, his dad's phone, I don't believe, I don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't believe I did. Do you know Becky's phone number? Not anymore. Okay. Um, did you memorize it before, or did you just hit your, you know, her name on your cell phone and click call? Uh, I, I probably, uh, yeah, I imagine I knew it. Okay. So if you were to call Becky, would you type in her number, or would you just scroll down to her name and hit enter? On my on my phone, I've got her saved as a, you know, it, or it was, it was saved as a, one of the quick dial numbers, so I just pushed like, you know, eight or something. Okay, so what speed dial? What was what was she? I don't remember. Okay. Is she still in your phone? No, she's not. Okay. What number would this be? Her cell phone, home phone? I had her cell phone and her home phone because her home or her cell phone it would get service up at uh, up in in the area. Okay. What about Christian? Does he have her number? I now or then? Then. It's possible, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, would you give him your girlfriend's number or? Probably would in case, you know, because he, he doesn't usually answer numbers he doesn't recognize, so it would make sense that he would have her number, but I'm, you know. Cell phone, home? If, if, any, if he had one, he probably had the other, just because sometimes, if, if she was ever gonna call him for whatever reason, sometimes she called him to get a hold of me, it would be from her house phone if she was up in up in Pinion, because she couldn't use her cell phone. Have you ever hiked with her before? Um, we've walked around. We've never actually gone like hiking. Okay. So but that, that was another thing that we we had we had spoken about doing. We wanted to go shooting and we wanted to go uh, hiking, but we never actually did it. Where would she go hiking at? Uh, just around her house. She had, she had, she had told me about uh, when, uh, like if you're standing at her house, like if you look like back, there's some like some like mountains that go up. She says she'll she'd uh, multiple times she'd like walk all the way back there and back, and she said she'd do that sometimes. Did you ever walk back there? Never, never actually, we never actually walked that far. Okay. Um, earlier, you mentioned something about a little girl. Yes. What was the deal with that? Well, Javier told me, he called me and told me that there was a body in a wheelbarrow, and he later told me that it was her body. Okay. Have you ever seen a wheelbarrow at her house? Uh, well, I don't know. There's all sorts of tools. They had a little, little tractor and things like that. I imagine there would be a wheelbarrow. But I, I don't think, I don't believe I've personally seen it. Okay. So if you haven't personally seen it, then it's fair to say you've never touched it? I, I wouldn't imagine, but I've, I've played around in their, uh, their garage before just because there's a lot of 
he had a lot of uh, power tools. I know I've, I know if I've played with the different uh, tools, some you know some are power tools, some yeah. are uh, uh, gasoline. Right, but there's a difference between tools and a wheelbarrow. Yeah, you know I, what a wheelbarrow is, right? I, I know what it is, but you know, like like with the phone thing, I just assumed. I'm not gonna say I never touched it, because it's possible that I've touched it before. How could it be possible if you never recall seeing one? Well, I mean, things can be somewhere and you don't remember it being there. Well, surely you remember a wheelbarrow. Well, I mean, they're, I don't know if, I don't know what their garage looked like after the fire. It could look like, in the pictures I saw, like online, it looked like that side was, wasn't, uh, the garage side wasn't as burnt as bad, so I don't know if the garage is okay, but if you've seen it, it's, there's a lot of stuff in the garage. So kind of like, uh, it's kind of like my grandma's garage down here. There's a lot of things in there and I'm sure I've touched a lot of them and couldn't recall it being there. Oh, you know what DNA is? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm talking about not DNA from years ago. I'm talking about DNA and fingerprints that are left at a crime scene. Okay. You know, that's stuff that you say, you know, hey, this is stuff that's left now, not from six months ago or 12 months ago and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So she died on a particular date. Okay. okay. We processed the crime scene for evidence. Okay. okay. And certain evidence was collected. Okay. And that evidence tells us certain stuff and even gives us time frames. Okay. So would your DNA or fingerprints indicate that you were at that house? On a day, you're asking me. Yeah, that she died. No, it would it would not be there. Okay. Do you know of anyone else that maybe told you uh, that they were up there? No, there's the the only person that I would, you know, like imagine that I had heard about was either like the stepbrother or some marine or something, but no one. No one really told me that they were supposed to be there. Okay. Now, you mentioned about Becky dating, you know, the Marines or whatever. What makes you think, why would she invite you up there if she's inviting someone else that you don't know up there? I believe that she, she still had feelings for me. I was, I was the one who broke up with her and, um, she didn't like that. And I, you know, I moved on. I had gotten uh, my current girlfriend, and uh, you know, I'd moved on and everything. And you know, I was trying to like slowly, like, kind of just shut off contact with her. But uh, you know, she, she still wanted to hang out with me. Okay. So, why would she invite you up there? and invite someone else that you didn't know? I I don't know. I mean, that's not, that wouldn't impress you, would it? It, it wouldn't. The only, the only thing I can imagine would be that she'd want to make me maybe jealous or something, but I mean, okay. I, I'm only speculating. I don't know why. That was, it, it, seemed, it seemed odd to me at the time, and it's kind of another reason why I didn't want to go. Becky had feelings for you. Did you have feelings for her still? It was, she was a big part of my life and you know, I couldn't just cut off everything, but it was, you know, I was, I was in the process of moving on. Definitely there wasn't as much feelings as there was, you know, earlier. Okay. So say, let's take like the seven days prior to her death. Um, Cause I understand, you know, you guys broke up, like what January of '06. I don't. So we broke up in January. That would make sense. Okay. Do you know when she died? September, because the year Do you anniversary know just came around. No, I don't know. Okay. So in those nine months, have you guys communicated, or what was the relationship in those nine months? Specifically, say September. I'm sure February, maybe you guys t 
talk more than September or vice versa, so tell me how that worked. I, I think the time that I had spoken with her, like the night before or day before or whatever, um, before the uh, you know, murder, whatever, whatever happened. It was a murder. Okay. All right. Then um, I would, I hadn't spoken with her in, you know, a little, good amount of time, you know, because I was, you know, like I was saying, I was trying to slowly stop the uh, communication, just kind of move on. Yeah. I don't know what you mean when you, for your time frame, a little amount of time. Okay. Uh, I, I, I honestly don't remember the last time I had spoken with her before that. It was... It was probably more than a month. Did you talk to her on the day she died? The day? Yes. Okay. How many times do you think you talked to her on the day she died? I believe once. Okay. Did you see her that day? No, not that day. Okay. The next, the day before she died, uh, you talked to her in person at uh, Christian's, Christian's house. house? Yes. Okay. Did you, and I know you said she, call, she called on the phone before she got to Christian's house. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's two communications that day. Did you guys have any other conversation that day? Wait, two communications that day? There was, wait. She called you, said, I'm in the area, and I'm going to come by. Uh -huh. Then she showed up at Christian's house. Okay. So you guys had two conversations. Oh, oh okay, day. okay, yes, yes. Okay. So other than those two conversations, did you talk to her at any other time on that day before she died? I, I don't, I don't think so, but I mean, I, I guess there's, it's always possible that you know, it's like, oh, she called to say something real quick or something, but I thought there shouldn't have been any other, like, detailed conversations. What about that day before, two days before she died? I don't believe I spoke with her. Okay. I mean, because if you call, if you talk to her one time, you may not remember. It could be insignificant. But if you talk to her 20 times, obviously you would remember. You know? Okay. Okay. So that's I, what I'm getting at. I, I don't I don't believe I did. I, I don't but I don't remember. It was, you know, some time ago. Okay. It's not gonna serve us much purpose if we talk about things and we just get a whole bunch of I don't remembers. Okay. Obviously well, I, I, that's I, why I'm, But then again I don't want to say something that's clearly wrong, you know. So sure. sure. I, I mean I, I I don't want you to do that either. I was trying to be, you know, like honest about the, like the phone thing I, I I assumed he did you know that I, it just would be weird for me that he didn't have a phone but uh, but I guess he didn't then so and I can relate to that Robert because that's why I'm not here assuming things isn't that fair wait, it, say, so wait say that again You're I said I'm not assuming things okay and that's fair for you because if I don't know something I'm asking you specifically I don't want to sit here and assume something because I could be be wrong in assuming something that you're not talking about. Okay. Okay, so I'm trying to be specific so we're not miscommunicating. So don't take my specific questions the wrong way. I don't want to, I want to understand what you're talking about, you know. That's what I'm trying to say. If you, I'm trying to find out about you guys as, um, relationship prior to her her death you know have you guys communicated have you guys you know was it one or two phone calls was it 20 or 30 phone calls you know I mean it wasn't it wasn't in any way a bad relationship there was no reason you know there, there wasn't any kind of like hostility or anything like that it was just kind of like a relationship that was do you guys text messages Use text message? Uh, I imagine we would. Okay. Uh, the night she died, um, you talked to her. Did you ever call her and not get a hold of her? Did I call her and not get a hold of her? Well, uh, I mean, it was, yeah. since it was the house phone, sometimes they wouldn't pick up. But, I mean, I, I couldn't, you know, rule that out. Well, you know, uh, I mean, you I have an answering machine, you left a message. Maybe you called her on her cell phone. You left a message on her cell phone. I shouldn't have left a message on her cell phone that day. I, I don't think so because unless I thought that she was supposed to be down in the desert, but I, I believe I knew that she was up there. Okay. So if you thought she was in the desert and you called her on her cell phone and she was home mm -hmm. 
obviously her phone went answered. Yeah, it would go straight to her answering machine. Would you leave a message? Would I if I thought if I you know, if I thought she was down in the desert? Yeah, I'd be like, oh hey, um, call her or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that seems reasonable. Yeah. So if you're going to cancel your hiking trip, would you call her cell phone or her home phone? I would call the phone to where I thought she was. And I believe I would have called the house phone because I, I believe that she was up there. I believe that's what my mindset at the time. What time were you supposed to go hiking? Uh, we didn't have... I remember speaking with her, she just said after work, and I just said, you know, after work, I've got to, you know, take a shower and stuff like that, so it's obviously going to be sometime after that, but I don't, I don't remember if we said a specific time. After your work or her work? My work. I don't think she worked that day. Okay, and so you got off work at 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock, right? Um, yeah, that, that would make sense. Okay. So what time... Would you call her in order to cancel? I mean, she would expect you at some point. Yeah. Daytime, I, nighttime? If, if anything, it would probably be a little bit later because I don't. I think I was trying to kind of just save it for the last minute. Just kind of like, oh, 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 this something just came up real quick or something. So I, I believe, if anything, I would have saved it until a little bit later. Okay. So what time do you think? Um, well, we were late for church and stuff so I, about five or six it obviously have to be you know after six or something I guess it'd be between six and eight or something okay but I thought well, eight seems too late anyway so I'd imagine it was before that okay well the only thing before eight and after six would be seven I guess that seems like a fair number right, that okay. I, would, I would guesstimate. So it would be fair to say that you would have called Becky around 7 to counsel because you would anticipate she would have been home at that time? I, I imagine, yeah. I'd say that would seem fair. Okay. So would there be a telephone record of you calling her cell phone at 7 o'clock? There should be. If I mean, obviously you've got the records and I, you know. I never there should be? No, I said her cell phone at 7 o'clock. Should I have called her cell phone at 7 o'clock? Would there be a record of you calling her cell phone at 7 o'clock? It, it's possible if I thought that she was there, but I... Well, why would you call her cell phone if you thought she was home? That's what I'm saying. I, I, I believe now that my mindset then was that I knew she was up there, but it's possible that she wasn't. I'm there, that I didn't know I was calling her cell phone just in case or something. Okay. Um... There are some issues that we need to resolve about all this, okay? Right. And there's a lot of maybes and not sure. Okay, well, okay. I, I think that within the year that it's been, that would seem understandable. Okay. If you're... I mean, if I, if I asked you like a you know, who who called who and at what phone number you called the person a year ago. I mean, obviously you're not going to remember unless it was significant, like, you know, what had happened and had been questioned about it. Okay. But even then, it's been about a year. Okay. Is Becky's death significant to you? Well, yeah. I mean, like emotionally or, I mean, what, what was it? I mean, I... I significant. Yeah. Yeah, that was, it was a horrible, you know, horrible thing that happened. I would think you would want to do everything in your power to help find who did this to Becky. And I, and I'd like to, I would, if I could help out. And I, you know, I'm trying to remember, but. Okay, so you would want to help me find out what happened to Becky and who did this? Yes. Would you do everything in your power to do that? Yeah, if there's anything, you know, I could ask someone or, you know, if there's someone you wanted me to talk to or something, I, I mean, I'm not really sure what you mean by that, but yeah, if there was a way I could help, I would. Okay. 
Is there someone that you know that I could talk to? The only person who I would know who had contact with her would be Javier. Um, I would say Javier because I believe he spoke with her on a regular basis, you know, like daily, you know, every day or other day or something. So he would be the only, the only other person. Okay. I didn't really know much of her friends. If the first time that you talked to Detective Michaels, do you remember talking to him in this room? Yes. And he was asking you about, you know, all this stuff about Becky. Mm. And you mentioned that you were going to go hiking with him or go hiking with Becky. Yeah, I was supposed to, yes. Okay. But you didn't tell him that you canceled. I thought I did. But you didn't. I, I didn't tell him that I did cancel. The what I say that I never spoke with her, or no, you just didn't. You just blew her off, basically. You didn't intend to go. Well, because I believe I remember talking about her calling. Uh, I believe she called Christian's cell phone after that because she knew I blew her off. So somehow I believe. Why would was she off. call Christian's cell phone? Because if she was trying to get a hold of me, Christian would be the only other person to get to it because I'm usually why was she trying to get a hold of you because obviously if I wasn't there or I hadn't talked to her you know what happened then obviously she'd want to get a hold of me and find out what's going on but didn't you just tell me you talked to her and counsel I believe I did so why would she call Christian and try to get a hold of you because I believe I called and canceled and she wasn't happy about it so she and then I uh, yeah, so she called Christian to get a hold of me because I thought if I stopped, you know, talking to her, maybe she called me and I didn't pick up or something. Okay. All right, you want to drink a water? Uh, my mouth is a little bit dry, but I mean, I, I was just... We're almost done. Okay.
Oh, I got a few more things, Robert. Um, you're saying the shotgun you got from your uncle? Yes, sir. I don't remember what the, you said it was a brand, was it the 1300 or? I believe it was, it's a 1300, Winchester 1300. Okay. How long have you had that? I haven't had it for very long. You can um, ask my brother Joe, uh, it's actually, his real name is Philip, everyone just calls him Joe. Okay. You can ask him that because he, um, Well say it made a trouble and just, I mean, give me a I, I've only had it for uh, no more than two months. Okay. And then the 7.62, how long have you had that? Uh, I don't know. I, it was a long time. I'd, I'd say a year. Okay. Have you had it before you registered it? No. I, I got it from a uh, Big Five. Okay, so the regi registration date is the date you bought from Big Five? Yes. Okay. Has Christian ever shot your two guns? Your shotgun and your never shot. He's never shot the shotgun. He has shot the uh, missing that gun. Have you shot his weapons? Uh, I shot the uh, the shotgun one time. When was the last time? It was when he first got it, and I uh, that was that was a good deal of time ago. I, I so I mean I, I guess you'd have to I, I couldn't even say when it was. Okay. They found a holster at your house. Yes, sir. Yeah, whose holster is that? That is mine because I was hoping to get a uh, I was hoping to get a. Uh, a Glock for the uh, the class, the uh, um, uh, peace officer training class, okay. and I mean, you know, I mean, I'll tell you, but if you want to verify, you can verify with my brother. I'm I'm trying to uh, save up money, and uh, well, I mean, it's really going to be his, but I'm going to use it for the class. What caliber are you looking at? Um, I I was I was looking at the Glock 22. The, um, it's the uh, the full size 40 caliber because it's um, I just heard it was just what the police officers are using now, which is a little more powerful than the nine millimeter. But it's uh, well, I guess it's just more, a little more powerful than nine millimeter. But I, I don't really know much about it. Have you ever shot a 40 caliber? No, sir. Um. Christian had mentioned something about you guys are going up to Becky's for a cookout. Cookout? When was that? When was it supposed to be? Like when you guys were going hiking. Really? Well, okay. The, I I don't I don't recall it. I really don't recall a, a, a cookout. Okay. I mean, is there something I else mean, to that? I mean, if anything, maybe that was had to do with the hike, and I. I I honestly didn't think that maybe he was supposed to go, but maybe, maybe he, maybe I had said that he was going to go or something. But I, I don't remember anything about a cookout. Okay. Did uh, Christian's dad, you know John, mm. you know him? I, I know pretty well. I mean, just just because he's my friend's dad, but. I would, Okay. I mean, he said he kind of knew you pretty well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we watched movies and talked like that. Okay. Talk like... He was kind of under an impression that both you guys were going up there, too. You thought we were actually going to go up there? You and Christian. I, where, where would he get that from? I I don't know where he would get that impression. Okay. Was there some conversation that you guys had that maybe other people thought you guys were going to do something that you did you actually intend to do? You know, like go up there? No, we we never had the intention of actually going there. Um, you ever heard of like pro-life Catholic ministries? Pro, we were pro-life, you know, against abortion. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's like a specific like group, but I pro-life Catholic mm -hmm. ministries. Well, you're Catholic. Yeah. And I, you know they have this people uh, who, yeah boycott. Abortion and stuff like that. Yeah, well, there's this Catholic group who go around to the local churches here, mm -hmm. the Catholic churches, mm -hmm. and they train the volunteers, you know, about you know, you know, pro-life, teenage pregnancies, things like that. Maybe you can assist with, you know, trouble teens or things yeah. like that. Okay. I mean, you have that at your church. 
um, is you know, there are people who are involved in it. My mom is involved in a program it's called Magnificat. I, I don't know what all that consists of, but some of these, some of this organization, it's probably the main, you know, uh, diocese in the San Bernardino. You know, their groups probably come around. They pass out their business cards. They go to your church, shake your heart. You know, mm. um, you ever seen any of these business cards? A business card? I. I mean, I don't know. Well, they say pro-life ministries on them. I, I don't recall, but I mean, I, I would imagine, I, maybe I haven't seen it, but I just don't recall seeing it. But I, I mean, it's just a business card. I don't know. Well, it's just not a business card. It's, you're 19 years old. Yeah. Okay. You go to college. Mm. You tell me that you've explored a career in law enforcement. Or I've taken trying. this class. I'm taking it now, yes. Okay. So... These aren't just general questions. These are things that maybe you know the answer to or you don't. Okay. Yeah. So if there was a business card for with your fingerprint on it that said Pro Life Ministries, would there be a reasonable uh, explanation for it? It would make sense because my mom is involved in um, Pro Life. Okay. You know, things like that. So I, I wouldn't. It would make sense that your mom's fingerprints on it, but I'm asking you about your fingerprint. I've helped out with the different things. I've gone and uh, uh, like do little like protest things, like go stand in front of the abortion clinics and things like that. Um, I've passed out like flyers and stuff. I mean, if if a business card was part of that, then I, I'm not ruling out that I wouldn't have touched it. It would okay. make sense if I, my fingerprint would be on something like that. Okay. Was Becky involved in that? Pro life? I I don't believe so. I mean, would you have conversation with her about it? I know we've spoken about it. I don't think she's ever like done anything that involved like stuff like that. I don't, I don't remember. So you like that want, would you give her a business card? Maybe I would. I, I mean, I, it's there's. I mean, I've got I've got things like that that Robert, I just. Robert. Robert. You telling me that. You're kind of involved in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I but, wouldn't like actively. But like, Becky's not. You would remember if you gave Becky a business card related to this pro-life abortion stuff, okay? I, I don't know why I necessarily. Recently. Recently? Okay. I, I don't know why I would have given her a card like that. I really don't know why I would have. Well, I'm asking you, would you have or would you not have? I'm not saying it's something I'd never do. I mean, they, well, you, certainly you would remember if you did. Well, I don't know why I would necessarily remember something like that. Why? Why is that such like? It's not like a significant event. It's just well, Becky's death. Okay, that, yeah, Becky's murder that's is pretty significant. significant. I, but I don't know how that makes a business card a significant. Well, thing. a business card about you know pro life and things like that. You're involved in it. She's not. Okay. You would remember. Why would you give it to her? Why would I remember that specifically? I mean, it's it's a business card. You so remembered a lot of things that weren't significant about all this. Like what? All sorts of things. We've talked about things for all sorts of things that you remember calls and conversations and places. They had no significance, but you seem to remember that. I do remember that because they were significant because those were things I was questioned about before. Okay. I was never questioned about a business card before. So it's yeah. not something that I would retain from a year ago. Calls and stuff that the was- The truth like, you retain, not other questions. Okay, other questions and answers, okay? That's, you know, he said, she said. The truth doesn't change, you agree with that. Okay, the truth doesn't Lies change. constantly change because it's hard to keep up with lies. Um, I'm kind of concerned with your fascination with, you know, with guns mm -hmm. and death. I mean, I've seen the posters on your wall. Yeah, and, different and they, video games. It's like action type video games, and uh, it's not necessarily an obsession with death. Well, posters, you know, the, um, um, you know, the pictures, or whatever. It just doesn't seem like someone who's involved in a taking law classes and things like that. I, I don't believe that that in any way demonstrates a person's criminal activity because- It just shows your personality. Okay, and, okay. and 
if you look at it, there are, you know, there's, I mean, you know, you've seen like pictures and stuff and videos of people who are in the Marines who go in there, you know, you hear them, you know, hoo on, but then they're kneeling in front of, you know, the chaplain or whatever. They're religious, but then they're still there to do something that a lot of people aren't willing to do. So I don't think that they're, you know, you can be faithful to God and, you know, you know, like things that have to do with death, like the Marines and stuff like that. So I don't see how that demonstrates any kind of mountain tent. That just doesn't make sense to me. I'm not saying a religious person can't be in the armed forces. Okay. I mean, the Marines aren't about death, are they? Well, what is it they do? They're, uh, you know, I mean, you hear all sorts of things, you know, like God sort them out and stuff like that, different, like, slogans. I mean, what, they're the armed forces. What, what do they use the their arms for? It's for the, well, how long has the armed forces been around? You know, many, many years. As long as they, arms have been around. Right? And, and the wars have been small and few in between. Okay. How many people have been in the military and never gone to war? Okay. Okay. Not even talking about killing people, just gone to war. Okay. So many people. So being in the armed forces isn't about death. Okay. Most of the people never even seen death. That's okay. True. And, and if you take out the present war, you would have a good percentage of these people who never been involved in death or seen death. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm just getting at your personality with what I can see in your room, okay? If you're a job applicant for a police department and they're coming over to 